end-to-end -end testing with Playwright. Yes, my name is Debbie O'Brien. I'm a senior program manager on the DevDiv community team advocating for Playwright. First of all, what is Playwright? Playwright is reliable end-to-end -end testing for modern web apps. It works on any browser, no matter what platform you are on, with one API, and tests run in full isolation. That means what happens in one test stays in that test, what happens in the next test stays in that test, and that just comes out of the box. Also, fast execution, which means your tests run super fast. Powerful tooling, which I'm going to show you a little bit of today, and multi-language. What do I mean by multi-language? It means if you are a TypeScript or JavaScript developer, a .NET developer, a Python developer, or a Java developer, you can use Playwright in the language of your choice. Today, I'm going to focus a little bit on TypeScript, and I'm going to show you how to get started um, using the VS Code extension. Now, this is the easy way. Just search for the Playwright for VS Code extension. Make sure you find the one ver verified by Microsoft. And this will allow you to install, run, write, and debug your tests right from VS Code. So let me show you a little demo on how to install Playwright. So here we go. We've installed the VS Code extension. And now what we can do is just type install Playwright. Once we press Enter, we can see we can choose the browsers we want to install, Chromium, Firefox, WebKit. If we want JavaScript, we can use JavaScript, and we can add a GitHub Actions workflow. Now, we're we can see here Playwright is installing all those browsers for us. And then over in the left in the menu, you can see everything that has been installed. We've got our GitHub folder, which has our GitHub Actions. And if we open that up, you can see the action used. That means your test can run on CI without you having to do anything. Now, here's our example spec test that's in the test folder. And we have in the test example folder another long demo um, of a demo to do app. So you can check that out as well. And then we also have the package JSON file and the Playwright config file. Now, the Playwright config file is where you would modify your base URL, uh, your projects, set up a local web server, and so much more. Now, how do we locate elements on a page with Playwright? So, Playwright lo uses locators. So, if you want to locate an element on the page like a button, we use locators. And locators are inspired by a testing library. So you can see we have here page get by text, get by role, get by label. And this is user facing roles. And this is the best way to write your tests. And you can see in the example, we have a wait page get by label username dot fill John. So by using these locators, we're also making sure that our website is accessible first. We're making sure that label for that form element exists, as well as testing that um, it has the name username. And then we fill it with John, and we're able to then fill the password, find the role of button with the name sign in, click, and then expect the page, get by text, welcome John, to be visible. Now, when it comes to picking locators, you might say, I don't know all these accessible roles, so how do I get started with this? But don't worry, I'm going to show you a demo how you can easily pick locators using our tooling. So here we're using VS Code extension again. And you can see in the testing toolbar, we have a pick locator button. Now we click this and hover over a browser window. And you can see highlighted underneath, you have all the locators available to you. So you can see get by role link name, get by test ID to do title, get by placeholder, what needs to be done. Now just clicking on that, we'll put it into the pick locator box in VS Code. And then we can easily copy it to our clipboard, paste it into our tests, and then easily use that locator in our tests. Now, when it comes to writing tests, how do we get started? Well, we have an easy way to get started, and that's called CodeGen, Playwright's test generator. You can easily generate your tests by recording user actions in the browser. So let's take a look at a demo of how to use CodeGen using the VS Code extension. So again, we open up our testing sidebar, and then we click on Record New. Now, this opens up a browser window where we can put the URL of the page we want to test. But look in VS Code. We've already got a file created. It's imported the test from Playwright Test. It started our test file. And it's every time I'm doing something in the browser, it's recording that and it's putting it right there in VS Code itself. So I can continue then to write my tests literally by just clicking in the browser window using actions, filling out. Let's water the plants. We'll press Enter. And you can see that press Enter was done. Let's do the shopping. Press Enter. And now we can click on the active. We can like, what are the plans? We've done that job. And then we can say active, how many in the active? And then all, let's click on the completed. And we could clear the completed as well. And you can see that all this is now written for us 
inside VS Code. We can cancel this recording, and then we can simply play the test. Now, obviously, I'm going to play this test, and this is going to pass, because I've literally just recorded the user actions. But we can at least kind of see what we've just done, and then we can go ahead, we can edit that test, and we can add the actual assertions. When we cleared the completed, we want to make sure that none exist. And we can you know, make sure that when we click on all, that there's two. When we click on completed, there's only one. And once we've done those assertions, we can rerun that test. But this is a really, really, really easy way of getting up and started. And look, look at all that just done in a matter of seconds. Now, project dependencies. So what happens when you want to run some tests before other tests? This is called project dependencies. And this is a list of projects that need to run before tests and another project run. So for example, we have some setup tests, like a login. And we want to run that setup before Chromium, WebKit, and Firefox projects run. So Let's take a look at a demo of this in action. So here we have a Playwright config file where we're using storage state. So we've got the storage state. And then in the config, we have some projects. Our first project we've called setup. And we're using the test match to match everything with setup.ts. Now, our second project is called e 2 test logged in. And that's matching everything with the logged in spec.ts. And it depends on setup and uses the storage state. And then our last e tree tests ignore the logged in and setup because they don't require any login at all. So how does this work? So in our login setup test, we're importing that storage state from the Playwright config. And then we've set up a simple login. We're going to our base URL, which we set up in the Playwright config. We're clicking on a link of login. We're entering the username, entering the password. We're logging in. And then we're expecting that button of name personal tools to exist, and then we're storing in the storage state that um, login. Now, in our menu logged in test, we're going to that base URL, and then we're just using, we're testing the menu here. So we're looking at the testing login, uh, the alerts menu, we're making sure those exist, and we're making sure that the logged in user has that menu available to them. Let's run the test and see what happens. Now, as you can see, the first browser opens up, and watch, it's logging in. So although I've run that test, of, log, of menu logged in. It's done that first setup for me. And now it's gone, and I'm already logged in. And it's testing that menu. And there we go. So I just had to run one test, and it already ran the logged in test for me. Now, what happens if I run the other test, the one that doesn't need to be logged in? So let's run it and see what happens. This one does not rely on setup. And as you can see, it searches for Playwright, but I'm not logged in. So projects are depend, project dependencies are a great way to set up your tests and run those logins before those other tests. Now, let me tell you a little bit about watch mode. A lot of our community were looking for watch mode. From like 2020, they were saying, we need a watch mode. We want a watch mode in Playwright. And people continued to ask us for this feature. And we made it happen. And literally a couple of months ago, we released our UI mode, which is in preview, and the crowd absolutely loved it. So we got a lot of great feedback from everybody. And I want to show you what the UI mode is. So first of all, to get started with UI mode, what is UI mode? It is watch mode and time travel debugging. It's using two things that users love, the trace viewer and the ease of basically using and playing your tests like in VS Code. Now, to get started in UI, UI mode, use npx playwright test dash dash UI. Let's take a look at a demo and see it in action. So here we have our UI mode. We have our, uh, here we've installed our tests. And we've got our demo to do app test. I've just moved it into the test folder so that we can play this test instead of it being in the test example folder. Now, this is just normally in VS Code. We're playing our test. And this is great, our test passed. But do I actually believe it passed? Did you see it pass? I mean, my tests are always good, right? They're always going to pass. Or are they? So that's where Show Browser comes in. That means we can open a browser window as we run our tests. Now, this is great because we saw what was happening. But did we really see what was happening? It was super fast. How can we slow that down? How can we go back in time and really understand what happened in that test? Now, that's where UI mode really shines. So we open up a terminal window, and then we type in npx playwright test dash dash UI. Once we do this, it will open up a browser window 
Now it looks a little bit like Trace Viewer if you've ever seen the Trace Viewer before. And correct, it's using the Trace Viewer under the hood. And then it's got over on the left hand side this menu with all my tests already in there. So you can see every single test is here. I can expand those tests. I can see which ones I want to, to play and work on. I can filter if I didn't find a specific test I wanted. I can also filter by projects, the Chromium test or the Firefox test, the pass test, the fail test. But what I really want to do is just play a test here. I want to see what happens. So to play a test, all you've got to do is click on the green triangle. So let's run this test. Now let's have a look at what happens. You'll see right here, it was just as fast as before, right? That test ran and like, do I know what happened? Wow. Now I can go back and forward in time just by hovering over each action. I can see what happened in the DOM snapshot in the middle of the screen. I can also see underneath all the code highlighted below. I can click on the before and the after and see the feed the cat. It was before, the after, feed the cat, what action, down below, what code is being used to write that test. So I can really have a great user experience and understand what happened in that test. This is really, really great for debugging. I can see the network and console if there were any errors, and I can see the full log of my test. I can also check the metadata. And I can also pop out the DOM snapshot into another window so I can easily debug it in full view. I can use the console, change the CSS, et cetera. Above at the top, there's a timeline. I can hover back and forth, which is really great for seeing animations. Now, what I really want to do is I want to actually watch my test because you know I'm, I'm building here. So I can click on the eye icon, and I can watch one test, or I could watch all tests or a selection of tests. Let's just watch this test. Now, I can open this test directly in VS Code by clicking this icon. Now, here I am in my test right at the moment that I want to change. And let's just change something very simple. Let's just change the comment here. I'm going to put UI demo. And now let's go back over. And you can see how quickly that test has just been rerun because it was in watch mode. Fantastic. So let's break a test because you know that's what we kind of normally do, isn't it, is we break it. Let's put what needs to be done, Debbie. That's not going to exist. Now, Playwright's going to search for this what needs to be done, Debbie, and it's not going to find that locator, which is fine. So while Playwright is retrying, let's take a look at what we can do if we were going to fix this error. We have a locator that's basically not being found. How would we go about and fix this? Well, we can use the pick locator button and we can basically hover over our DOM snapshot and find the locator that it should be compared to the one that Playwright is trying to find. Now, you can see we've just timed out. So our test is, you know, it's failed. You can see the X over in the, in the window on the left. But you can see there, that's the locator that should be get by placeholder what needs to be done. And you can see down at the bottom, there's the word Debbie in there. Now I can copy this and then I can go back to my tests and I can paste this in to the actual correct place in my code. Now, once I paste this in, I can rerun that test. Well, it's just going to run it because it's in watch mode. So it's rerun automatically. And you can see how fast that was. The test passed because the locator was correct. And I've just debugged my test. And this was a really, really, really nice experience. So as you can see, you can play all your tests as well. And look how fast all those tests are going to run. And we can then open any of those tests. And we can hover back and forward over each one and really kind of see what's going on, debug them if there was any failed tests, and pick the locator if we need to pick a specific locator, check the before or after, go through the timeline, and filter for any of those projects that we have. So that's our UI mode, and I hope you really enjoy using it. Now, Playwright is open source and free, and you can see we have a lot of NPM downloads. We've been growing over the last three years. Uh, GitHub stars, we've over 50K stars, so thank you to everyone who has starred us. And if you haven't already starred us, please give us a star. We collect stars. We love stars. Also, join the Playwright community on Discord. We have an amazing community, and they're all posting impressive videos and articles, as well as helping each other out in the chat forum. And we have some happy hours there on certain Fridays. So come and hang out with the community on Discord. And that's all for me. Thank you very much, and happy testing.